Hi, I'm Jason Webster, Beck Cybrids, Practical Farm Research Innovation Lead. Today we're continuing our tour through the Midwest, talking with growers trying to achieve high yielding corn here in the 2015 growing season. With me today is Tim Miller from White Pigeon, Michigan. Tim has signed up in Beck's Hybrids 300 Bushel Challenge. Also with us today is Paul Jacobs. Paul is the local seed advisor for Beck's Hybrids here in the Michigan area. Paul is here because he's been working with Tim, making agronomic recommendations, and he's documenting Tim's personal journey to 300 bushel corn. Tell us, why did you decide to take the 300 bushel challenge? I glean a lot of useful information because I can come out here on 30 acres and change it a little bit, and, and we got monitors and everything in the combine so I can see if it has any reward. And that's the reason I do it. If I glean something from this that really makes a difference, it goes on all my acres. When we were talking earlier, you said something about your father winning a yield contest years ago. Tell us a little bit about that and what the highest yield was at that time. Um, that was 199 bushels and it had to be every bit of 15, 20 years ago mm -hmm. um, in the state of Michigan. And now if, if we don't get 200, I'm disappointed. What would you say the county average corn yield is in this particular area? Well, I got seed corn all around me. Um, the seed corn yields 60 to 80 bushels an acre. Um, if you run good irrigated corn, it's probably probably from 200 to two and a quarter. That will pick up a lot of people. Okay. So you're looking at maybe an 80 to 100 bushel yield gain with being a part of the 300 bushel challenge. Tell us planting day. This particular cornfield looks excellent right now. We're about at the V5 to V6 growth stage out here in the field. Corn looks great. When was it planted? April 27th. April 27th. And what were conditions like at planting time? It was cold. What's the weather been like since planting? What, um, since that April 20th planting day, what's, what kind of weather have you gone through? We've been getting rain about every three, four days. Um, this Monday we had four inches. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing as far as agronomic practices go on this 300 bushel challenge that might be different than your normal farming operation. What you see here is 12 and a half gallons of starter um, with 2,500 gallons of hog manure. Mm -hmm. We'll probably go three more times and could go the fourth time on dropping in on this and splitting our end apps up. So go through a scenario <clears throat> of the multiple applications of nitrogen that you'll typically do in, on this 300 bushel plot. Just kind of go through a timeline. Um, <clears throat> with the planter, I'll go 12 and a half. Um, I'll come back in with um, injectors and pop down about another 40 gallons. That's what I normally do is pop down 40 40 gallons. We usually end up with about 180 pounds total, sometimes 200, just depends on how the crop looks. And then if I need anything additional before tassel, I, I walk my fields a lot. That's critical to make decisions is you got to get out and walk. Um, but I like to hit it with a little bit of 28 right before tassel. And you'll put that through the irrigation I'll pivot? I'll put it through the irrigation pivot, chemigate a little bit. Um, not much. It don't need much. What I'm looking at is um, bottom leaves, how yellow they are, and if it's firing up any. That's what determines what I'm doing. I try to be as efficient as I can. So a lot, of, a lot of times growers think of a 300 bushel challenge and they want to put on 300 plus pounds of nitrogen. Where will you be at total pounds of nitrogen in this particular 300 bushel challenge? Well, I had 293 two years ago and I did it on 200 pounds. That's excellent. Now, Paul, as a local seed advisor, you make recommendations to growers such as Tim, and I, I guess I'm curious, within our Practical Farm Research book, has there been any agronomic studies that have been useful in making recommendations to Tim or maybe solidifying some of the decisions that Tim has wanted to implement as far as this 300 bushel challenge goes? Absolutely. Uh, you know, as Tim said, we've been working together. This is either our fourth or fifth year of doing this 300 bushel challenge together. And, and we wait for this book to come out in November and we go through it and, and look through and, and see what, you know, what, what we can incorporate here. Uh, early on, we've, we've done population uh, increases and decreases. We've done different things with manure, different things with fungicide. And one of the things that uh, he mentioned he added this year was pop-up to his planter. And there's a study in here that, you know, we maybe didn't make money every time that we applied it, but there's promise. 
Um, and you know, with, with Tim trying to maximize his inputs and get the most out of that dollar in, um, that's the option that we tried for this year's uh, 300 bushel challenge. That's excellent. And you mentioned that you're putting two by two on as well as pop-ups. You're doing both scenarios. Yes. Um, within some of these sandy conditions that you have. The um, it's a must to run two by two on in sand. There just ain't enough organic matter here to make corn grow. So that's a must. Another must is um, we pump so much water, and if it gets really dry out, we will have big time problems with uh, fungicide and disease. Mm. And I found out on the first go around with a 300 bushel that about three three ounces of um, Stratego at this stage will keep my fields clean mm. as clean all the way to tassel. And that was basically a half or eight at V5 does that really keeps the fields really clean all the way to the tassel and then you know if I need something else I'll go from there but in five years I never sprayed any fungicides mm -hmm. before tassel my fields were clean enough not to and you're spraying the fungicide the stratego yield that you mentioned you're spraying that as a tank mix partner with your roundup yes I just had um, I think the the um, label now on Stratego's, they're down to two ounces, and I've been doing three for quite a bit, for five years. Paul, as, um, as a local seed advisor, you've got a benefit of having Farm Server at your disposal at Bex Hybrids. How do you plan on using Farm Server in regard to Tim's 300 bushel challenge? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple ways that we're going to do that, Jason. And first of all, you know, Tim's got the ability as well as I do. We stop by, we walk the field. If we notice something awry, we can either one of us make a note on, on the farm server scouting app. Um, then you know we that shows up on both of our iPads. Then we you know can talk about it and make adjustments as necessary. The other big component that, that I can't wait to do with it is to get farm or uh, crop health imaging. Uh, ordered through the, the farm server app, then be able to look at those images uh, as soon as they're flowing right on our iPads. We don't, we don't have to wait for, for days or weeks to make that happen. The feedback is very quick. We can make adjustments and uh, use that app to do that. So looking forward to using farm server to make those things work. And Tim, you had said that you can't do scouting from the pickup truck going down the road. So crop health imaging is probably a huge asset for your farming operation. I like the farm server. Matter of fact, I just signed up for it. Um, all the apps I do on when I do them, what time frame, manure apps, um, all that, I can throw a flag if I see something on server when I'm walking. That, to me, that's a big deal to use my iPhone and keep track of that. I like that. Yep. Great management tool. When do you think you'll, you'll start uh, doing crop health imaging on this particular farm? Probably we'll look at doing that first pass about the time we get ground canopy. Uh, so, you know, about, about when the corn's knee high to mid thigh high, um, seeing if we can, you know, find anything, uh, nutrient deficiencies or anything uh, awry that maybe we can't even see with our eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, just walking the field and then we'll probably do one just as the plants begin to senesce there and, and fall and, and do that. So we'll probably do two, two passes and, and then see how those correlate up to the yield monitor at the end of the season. How do you feel about the crop right now as it stands? Where do you think you're at in, in comparison to past years? We got as good a stand as I've seen in the last three years, and the color is absolutely awesome. And I give a lot of credit to that to the pop-up mm -hmm. because um, Tim screwed up on one planter on one on uh, about 100 acres that I ran a little 28 in, so I had to cut it. Mm -hmm. And where I cut the pop-up, it looks like the old stand used to. A little test, but we can definitely see a difference. And I, I'm a big guy on eye appeal. It, it's got to look good to be good. And it does look good. Oh, so. it looks fantastic. Like I said, it's one of the best fields we've seen so far this spring um, up here in White Pigeon, Michigan. Be sure to check back in with us next month as we continue to follow Tim on his personal journey to 300 bushel corn. We'll check back in. We'll see what kind of weather Tim's had on this particular 300 bushel challenge. And then we'll check in with him to see what type of products and applications that he's done trying to achieve that 300 bushel yield level. Until then, this has been Jason Webster following this farmer's personal journey to 300 bushel corn.